Hello, people of YouTube. Hello, silver stackers. Hello, coin roll hunters. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. This is Michael from Penny Haven. And first off, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button, then give it a like, then come back over here and hit that bell icon so you know when my new videos come out. All right. Very excited about this video. My last video was my first eBay coin grab bag for quite a while, and that was fun. But I wanted something a little different, so I found this listing on eBay, and it was $100 shipped Silver World coins. Right up my alley. Very excited to see what I got. And the claim in the listing was that it would be $150 NGC value. I did run into one <laughs> very glaring issue as soon as I opened the package and looked through it. I recognized one coin, not silver. I'll let you know how that turned out. But I'm going to put the camera the other way so you can get a really good look at the coins I just got. Here we go. All right. So here we go. Time to take a look at these coins. And I did a bunch of research here. I actually uh, wrote up a whole list here of basically the coin, what they had valued it at, and what I would value it at. It's closer to what I would charge to sell it than what I would expect to pay for it. So do with that information what you will. All right, so first off, <laughs> this was the little confusion part. So this is an 1881 Colombian two and a half centavo. The only problem is this is not silver. And I was familiar with this coin and I had sold one a couple months ago on my eBay store and I got nine bucks for it. They thought it was the silver version and they valued it at $15. There was a silver version of this coin this year. It was a crossover year where it went from silver to copper nickel. So this is the first year of the design. I brought that to their attention and they immediately, to their credit, she refunded me $15. So that was great of her to do, especially since I, I know I can turn around and sell this. On my list here, I valued it at about $8, which is basically what I would charge for it. So eight or nine bucks I'd charge for it. Next up, we have another coin I'm familiar with, a 53 El Salvador 25 centavos. Not in bad shape. They valued it at $3, and I just went ahead and I agreed with that. Next up, we have a 1904A, one mark. They valued it at 20 and I would probably list this coin between 10 and 14 bucks. Kind of far apart on that one. And another thing I brought into consideration when I was valuing these was eBay comps, sold items, and I have some of that information written down as well for certain coins. I still love the mark, this design. Now in 1868A, Prussian, two and a half Groschen. Now, they pretty much, for almost all of these prices, they went to NGC and just took the fine price and wrote that directly. So this is fine, four bucks, and actually, I, I would value this one higher. I know I can get more than four bucks selling this in my eBay store. So I would say $8 plus on this one. So there you go. Next up, something I'm very familiar with, a 1915 Great Britain sixpence. This is the sterling silver version up until 1920. George V, it's not in great shape at all. They valued it at four. And I agreed four bucks is about what I would charge for this sterling silver coin. Next is an 1861 Portugal 50 Reyes. This was a nice little coin. I had not come across one of these previously. It's got the crowned date. And then the 50 Reyes, the denomination with a wreath around the outside. It's a very cool coin. Mid 19th century. So they said fine, ten dollars, and I said about eight, and then I looked up some comps, and the comps were from six fifty to eighteen dollars. So I would probably start this a little higher, 
and then give people the option to make offers on it. Nice one there. This is a 1362 Hyderabad for Annas, or a one quarter rupee. And this is silver. And it's got a gate here. I forget what the gate was to. Beautiful in reverse. Very stylized. Instantly recognizable as Indian. They said 10 bucks. And I had to go a lot lower because this is actually very low silver content and wasn't finding good comps. I said about three bucks on this one, actually. It's, it's got an interesting, you know, factor to it, so I might list it higher than that, but I wouldn't pay more than three bucks for this. Next up, an 1848 Norway 12 skilling. And they gave it a very good 10 bucks. This guy thought he looked a lot like William the Fourth. I know this royals. A lot of them are interrelated, but let's see. What did I give this one? They gave it a ten. And I said six bucks. It's kind of in between what I would expect to pay and what I would list it at. So bigger coin. This is a 1964 Netherlands one golden. And this is uncirculated. It's got toning. I would say is artificial toning, most likely. They gave it a four dollar value. I would sell this for six bucks easy. This one. Really like this one. This is a 1900 JF Peru one-fifth sole. I've had quite a few un soles coming across my desk the past year or so. I've bought a lot of them from the same uh, seller on Facebook. This is uncirculated. They have it at $30. I valued it around 15 with the comps being from 650 I think that was just an unfortunate auction, all the way up to $17. So I think they're, they're way off on this, but it doesn't really matter because I'm keeping this one. I just wanted to show you this piece I got maybe a year and a half ago. This is a 1934 Peruvian Unsol. And I bid on the auction, not too many other people were, and I'm not sure if people thought it was fake or what, they just didn't like the fact that it's on this device, but I got this for about seven fifty, dollars uh, like at least less than 8 bucks, and maybe I paid up for shipping, but altogether it was a steal, because this is actually genuine, and I love these Unsol coins, so it was a great break for me. And this one can go right along with it. Beautiful design. And I didn't have any of the fractional ones before. Keeping that. All right. So this is an Egyptian coin. That's King Farouk. Obviously, this is completely uncirculated. It's a nice looking coin. This is from 1944. And it's an Egyptian two piastres. They valued it at 10. I said five. I'm probably going to keep this one. I do have a collection of Egyptian coins and Egyptian themed bullion, so I'm going to go in there and I think I have one that I can upgrade with this. Next. Okay, so the date on this is 1293 24. So, that so that's the 24th year in this single date series. So this is one Kurush from Turkey. Very thin little silver coin. It's got a little damage. Back here looks like it was maybe clamped. They valued it at five. And I valued it at three. This one. This just might be the pick of the litter here. I love these coins so much. This is an 1808 Mexico City Mint 1 Real. And it's in pretty decent shape overall. The reverse is kind of split right down the middle with uh, some darker toning over here. I'm curious to what caused that. The obverse is definitely more worn. The reverse is very nice. They valued it at 25. I said 20. But the comps for this, definitely they went through $5 to $40 for similar ones. So, But yeah, I would probably list that for about 20 bucks. Finally, we're at the last one. <laughs> and came up with another stinker here. 
I, I kind of look at this one, I'm like, oh, wait, am I going to have a little surprise when I get down there? And yes, I am. So I saw it said 10H, and I knew that uh, 10 Hellers is knocked silver. This is a copper nickel coin, once again, 1916, Austria. I just decided to not even contact them about this one. It's fine. I like Austrian coins. I will probably put this with my collection, and if it upgrades one, I'll kick that out. They valued it at two bucks. I did not value it. All right, so how do you think I did? Well, turns out that what they valued was 164. That's including the $15 for the copper nickel one. And I valued them all up to 145. That's almost their estimate of what it would come out to. And we definitely disagreed as to where the value was. But overall, I like it. Now, a lot of you are going to disagree with me about the prices that I put on these. All I can say is these were more geared as to what I would list them at in my store, conservatively. So, I definitely think I will get my value back out of this, even keeping a couple of these coins. So. This was definitely a different grab bag. I totally dug it. And I'm pretty dang happy with what I got. So this was definitely a non-traditional type of grab bag. But it was a lot of fun going through and pricing all these things and looking up all the information. All right. Now I have to consider grabbing myself another Marley and Tea grab bag. Hmm. Let's see. Just might have to get a hold of Tea here pretty soon. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you to my YouTube channel members. This is Michael from Pennyhaven. Happy hunting.